Hey guys, Chris with Entertain the Geeky here, just wanting to give you some fun information. I need you guys to go to slugfestgames.com slash ETG. The reason I need you to do this is because these guys have cooked up some of the best games to come out in a long time. You've got games like Red Dragon Inn, which is one of our personal favorites here, The Battle for Greyport, You've got High Noon Saloon and Fishing for Terrorists. They've got a bunch of different stuff. And then if you want swag, they've got swag. So guys, go to slugfestgames.com slash ETG for more information. So, if you want a gun-toting, fist-fighting, beer-drinking kind of night, where do you go? You go to the High Noon Saloon. That's where... Brought to us by... Slugfest Games, the same people that brought you Red Dragon in... Fishing for Terrorists... And the Battle for Brayport... And much, much more. Guys, if you go to slugfestgames.com slash ETG, you can get the hookup on all kinds of different good stuff that these guys are doing. So many games. So, so many much games. swag. Oh my gosh. All the swag. All the games. And they have this wicked sweet game right here. High yeah, Noon Saloon. High Noon Saloon. Um, it's a western game set in a bar. What could go wrong? I mean, basically, if you came looking for a fight... You came to the right place. No, I mean, that that is their tagline. So, guys, go to slugfestgames.com slash ETG for more information. Whether you're a guy in a cave or a rock who's sneaky, thank you for joining Chris, Roger, and Jason as we... Go ahead, Jason. Entertain the geeky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, so behind the scenes, like, like, like... like Normally, our, our front-end advertisements is, is a pre-recorded thing that we've done, and Chris is like, hey, let's wing it live for a second. And Chris's transition was just straight from ad to hitting the song, and it, I was done. You broke Roger at that point. I'm very good. You broke Roger. So, Jason, um, we're going to talk a little bit about, about you being a, a fucking nerd, if you don't mind. <laughs> All right. That's cool. And, and a topic that you and I have neglected for a while, because, yeah. I mean... We have a new show getting ready to come out soon. In, here in a night, bit. In, in a bit, in like a month or two. Um, Dungeons and Dumbasses. Yes! Which is which is our which is our take on... on, on we're going to play D&D. Yes. We're going to play D&D. We're gonna, it's going to be a comedy show. It's going to be drama. It's going to be fighting, high, high action. There's going to be sex, drugs, Drinking and in the bars. And, and, and hanging out in the prostitutes. Yeah, it's a... <laughs> like, 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 so We're ETG, smoking, drinking, fucking... ETG pre- presents Dungeons and Dumbasses. So, but, but we have not talked about role-playing games in a while. It's and, been a minute. And like some big news has happened in the world of role-playing games. Oh. Um, White Wolf is getting ready to release their beta. For the new version of, of, of World of Darkness, of Vampire the Masquerade, I have okay. I have signed up for this. So, you, what do you mean signed up? Like, I'm I'm signed up. I'm ready. Once the beta gets released, they're emailing it to me, and like, I'm gonna run the shit. All right. Like, I love World of Darkness. I haven't played World of Darkness since since you got out of your emo. I'm not a goth face. I get that. Yeah, probably. Yeah, but I'm a teenage what, years what, still. So, I don't want to really talk about World of Darkness, but I want to talk about just role playing games in general and like right. like what it means to, to to be a role player because. For a lot of geeks out there that don't roleplay, that don't do the D&D or the Pathfinder or the Deadlands or, or the games we love, it's, it's kind of this weird sort of thing to try to describe because you're like, hey, I'm sitting around a table rolling some dice and acting. Making believe. Right. But it's so much more to that. So so I really want to talk not, I want to talk about like what roleplaying means to you and like some just some awesome times you've had. All right. Well, I mean, honestly, what I, th- I mean, I think the, 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 the way you, you kind of put it there was... Accurate, but I think, you know, uh, sparing, like there's more, there's more that goes into it than just pretending to be someone else. I mean, it's, it's not necessarily that you have to be a performer. I mean, if we're obviously the thing you're about to do. Oh no, we're we're performers. We are performers and we're going to try to entertain you guys. Not, whoa, whoa. There is no try. Do or do not. We're going to entertain the game. Whoa, whoa. There's no do not when it comes to Chris and Roger. (laughs) We just do it. (laughs) <laughs> but uh but if you're just sitting around playing with you know your friends in your basement it's it's really just a way to engage in something that's silly and, it's and silly you're yeah. not trying to be cool you know what no it's being not cool is being cool but it's cool <laughs> like, like but you also like it's cooperative storytelling yeah you know like like i had a conversation with uh jams the other night because he's trying to do this really cool D D thing which I'll talk to you about off the air because Joe listens and he's playing in this game. Oh, but okay. like I told him, I said, the best thing you can do, because he was so worried about how do I get players to where I want them to go. I'm like, 
dude, the best thing you can do as a DM is let the players do what they want to do and just leave enough hooks for them to actually trip on to what you want them to do. Well, sure. You, like, that's the yeah. cooperative storytelling element. You're building yeah. a world together. Yeah, you write a, I mean, you write a beginning and an end. You know where your story's going. You know what the beats are that lead to that end. But you let the players decide how they get there. Yeah. I mean, that's the best way to do it. What's your favorite? Like, 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 let's talk. Like, like in in your in your years of gaming, real quickly, what's like one of the one of your most favorite moments? Taking down a dragon's horde. Like a horde of dragons? No, no, one dragon and a big horde of gold that oh. we uh, that we got as much as we could out of there and just left the rest. Unguarded. In what system? Uh, this was three point five. Do you know how jealous I am of you right now? I have never fought a fucking dragon. Dude, fighting a dragon is hard. We I know. Were, we had to be. We were really high level by the time this happened. I've never fought a dragon. Like, <laughs> like in all my years of role playing, like, like, yeah, in, in the Adventure League, I rode a dragon, but we were level one. We weren't meant to fight it. Sure. I have never fought. I have never walked into a dragon's lair, drawn my sword, or readied my bow, knowing I was going into battle against a great dragon. Yeah. I mean, sitting down. The, the greatest thing about some of those things is what happens at a table, where you sit down and you try to plan how this. How this battle's gonna go out? You get recon. You try to understand the layout of the cavern system. Yeah, I mean, it, and then it, it all goes to shit once you roll initiative. Sure, <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it's still a dragon. It breeds fire and can fly, and it's fast. And you're inside its house. It's, yeah, it's yeah, terrible. It's a whole thing. Yeah. What about you, Chris? Um, actually, the first time we sat down to play Dungeons and Dumbasses with our group was it was a breath of fresh air. So we have a couple of new players there, and uh, it was fun watching people and i think this is probably always my favorite thing about starting a new campaign watching people start to become their character yeah and, and you died <laughs> no i didn't i mean you technically did you were brought back to life but like like you, you fell fine. in battle i was fine you fell in battle in you the did. pussy battle you fell not you, in the real battle you did fall in battle listen <laughs> it's a gnome bard you fell in battle well then you should be perfectly you know capable of playing some songs to defend yourself <laughs> <laughs> I want you guys to go ahead and fuck yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> the worst part is like he fell and he like like the look on his face was like so prized because he's like oh. I, I mean, knew I was I meant g- zero. <laughs> I knew I should hear yeah I'm dead. I knew it was gonna fucking happen. It was all but inevitable because there's fucking orcs everywhere. God. There's four orcs. That's everywhere. Okay, he's a gnome. You just rushed out there. You're like I'm out there in the front line. The two fighters were still in the bar and you're like I'm on the front line. Yeah, you, you, you need to you I need to did a your thunder strategy. wave. You, you did. Your strategy. The bards sense. stay in the back until yeah. they're needed no, no, no. to go to the front. I did a fucking thunder wave to push everybody back. Like, it made sense on paper. And then it only pushed one back, and I started getting mouth fucked. Do you know well, what? the important thing is, did you learn not to do that thing? No. Because well, it's going to do it again. It'll do it again. Like, like, like. <laughs> Look, my character's a little bit impulsive. <laughs> a little gung-ho about his, about his wife. Here. So, yeah. I mean, you've, you've heard him sing. Like... He's you all will hear him sing soon enough. Will. My my favorite role playing moment was actually during Merle's truck stop in Maine, when 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 Matt Ooh. lost his arm. Oh, that was awesome! Like, like 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 he goes he goes I'm gonna stick my hand through this thing and see and like he just loses his arm and he goes, oh that's not good. <laughs> like that right there, like just that's uh, not good. Just uh, cracked me <laughs> up. And we all died in that game. Everybody died. We're going to be doing Emerald's Truck Stop real soon. Yes. Like, like as a ETG special, um, we're going to do Emerald's Truck Stop in Maine demo episode. I think I think our original cast might change a little, and we'll talk off the air about that, because I know someone I want to have come on for this. Is it me? Well, you're definitely part of it. Lemur's part of it. I'm but there's a th- it. He's, there, there, there's... he's just saying that to no, make me feel talk... better on Fuck the off, air. Fuck off, Lauren. It's on the air, so it's official. Like, like, <laughs> fuck off, Lauren and Hippie. Dude, we talked about this. I said, like, I want you and Lemur to play Emerald's Truck Stop as a special. But there's a third person I want to invite on. A menage. Yeah, I want to invite him on, but I want to have him on the show before Haven't we do. Have you ever heard of a manage O three? <laughs> a manage O three? That was freaking magical, right there. What you oh just did with those, with those words. <laughs> yeah. So, Jason, what's your favorite role playing game? What's well, a manage O three now? <laughs> <laughs> what is my, my favorite role playing is game is still Dungeons and Dragons. Um, and, and I don't mean a specific system. I just mean playing in a in the in the world of magic and elves and dwarves and stuff. That's that's pretty much always my go to. I love it. What about you, Christopher? It's D and D. Am I the only one that's not going to say D and D? No, you're going to say Deadlands. I'm actually like Deadlands is my favorite. Yeah. Yeah. 
I, just, I mean, don't get me wrong. There's other games. No, there's other great, great games out there. I used to love playing Vampire. I used to love playing Werewolf. I loved these games. There's there's so many other games out there. Like, like D&D will always hold a special place. I think it was, like, D&D was one of the later role-playing games. Because like, role-playing was okay in my house growing up. D&D was not. Sure. It was taboo. A, it was a very weird thing. So, like, I could play Vampire. I could play Deadlands. I could play Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and other strangeness. I could do all those things. I could play Star Wars. D and D until third edition came out was kind of this taboo thing that we just didn't do. Well, no, like so <laughs> it's because your parents thought it promoted devil worship. My, my mom and my up, friends, like my honestly, mom grew up Pentecostal. So like the first time D and D got brought up in my house, oh my mom's God. like, "That's for devil worshippers." <laughs> Southern Baptist. No, you know, no, 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 no. I'm saying so, Southern Baptist. Okay, so I'm like. What the fuck? Yeah, the greatest thing is that when most people, most of those people who had that mindset found out is it's just a loose collection, at least at that time, it was just a loose collection of nerds with skin problems that enjoyed, you know, Mountain Owls. Dew and potato chips. And like, and like, <laughs> and like you really didn't role play in, in the original Dungeons and Dragons. You were like, how do I, how do I, hold on. Because here's exactly how a session of, of zero edition D&D went. All right, you guys walk down a cavern. You see a goblin. Okay, I attack. Hold on, what do I, what the fuck do I roll? I gotta roll a D6, a D4, a D8, divided by two, times it by 1.5. Alright, hold on, guys. Like, that was zero edition D&D, followed by the, you see a sack of flour and you touch it, you die. <laughs> <laughs> Never touch the flour. Never also, touch. when the game first came out, I mean, you have the, I mean, it's, it's kind of a goofy joke that a lot of people have gone to, but it's actually based in reality. When you first play D D, it's awkward, right? Like it's, hey, you guys can talk to each other now. Oh, I hey, attack the darkness. I'm Glanthor, the merciful. You know, like what do you no, do? Like no, it's weird at no, first, the, right? Like no, it is. You're the, right. The, the best is like when you have an experienced player and like the, the, the complete newbie, and the newbie's like, um, my name is 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 John Thal. I have a a dagger and a bow, and I'm dressed in a cloak. And the other guy goes, I am Rigor, clan. Of the Rigorians. <laughs> my family has died. I have a scar across my left cheek. And what that is from, I will not tell. <laughs> that, sounds, really, that sounds like Capuano. Don't worry about <laughs> my weapons. Because you will never see them unless it's battle. Or Brent. You can yeah. Capuano or Brent yeah. at that point. Well, like, like, that, like that is the best thing. The, the newbie's like, oh my god, I want to be him so bad. <laughs> I want to be him. <laughs> Why am I not you? Are you there any girls nerd. there? If there are any girls there, I want to do them. <laughs> okay, so what's funny is Dungeons and Dumbasses. We have Tara and Carly. Yeah, so Car we have Carl, girls. The cosplayer. Yeah. Um, Tara is brand new to role playing. This is her first role playing thing. Sure. She rolled everything for her character and has one of the best characters that I've ever seen. She because sniffs of it. people. She's so awkward. She was, she was raised by wolves. I yeah, believe. I think yeah, that was right. The, yeah, I think that was the so thing. So awkward. Yeah. Um, but so much fun and like. She's she's figured out, like, talking to her about it a little bit, she started to figure out that, oh, my character would do this. And I'm uh, like, yes, your character yeah. would. And I love it. I love it. I think it's freaking adorable. It is great. When I got Corey involved in a game, it was great. What game you got Corey involved into? Uh, I ran a Pathfinder game for her and uh, Zach, Shannon, and Lemur. Uh -huh. Yeah, they were. Uh, so the premise of that game was uh, ancient, a more ancient time in the D and D world when humans were still like primitive cave people, and the, the the land was pretty much dominated by elves and dwarves, and they were at war with one another. And it all every each one of my players played an elf from like a different tribe of elves from around the world that got summoned to answer the call of the high elven k king to quest because the dwarves had stolen a priceless artifact. I mean, it was classic, you know, hero stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it was my wife and, and Zach and Shannon and Lemur. And it was great. Because we want to be heroes. It was super So fun. on that note of being a hero, random random thing. So tonight, uh, me, Tara, and the kids went to Little Caesars. Okay. Super romantic. All right. I want to know how a hero plays into this. I'm going to explain. Let me get on with my story. Furthermore, why isn't the Little Caesars for me? It's in the fridge. Um, so we go to Little Caesars, and I go inside. I get pizza, and Christopher came with me. We come out, and Tara's like, hey, I got quarters for the kids to get bouncy balls. So she goes in. The kids go back in. I put the pizza in the car, follow behind them, and uh, they get their bouncy balls. We exit, and I go to get Tara's door for her. Um, I open the car door, and... 
a lady in the car next to us was like, what just happened? Because fucking gentleman etiquette is gone nowadays. So, so she goes. She always did. She goes, I've never seen that happen in real life. And I was like, what? Were you like, hey, you and just come live she, with me? She goes, you're a true gentleman. And I was like. I'm not. Thanks. But yes. And then I looked at Tara and I was like, you're welcome. <laughs> Jeez. That lady's gonna go home tonight and be like bitching to her husband. You never open the car now for me, right? You never pull out your chair for me. Well, there, there you was never like, stand up when I leave the room. This lady had like a three minute conversation with Tara as I'm trying to drive off after that about because how pizza's awesome getting cold. Yeah, I know. I'm like, hey, it's time to go, lady. I'm glad I made your day. Shut up. We need to go. Eat pizza. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, like, bro. She's not a listener. You just alienated one of your listeners. Well, we alienate all the listeners all the time, but we love them. <laughs> we just call them out on their bullshit. Like, that's how it works. I mean, that's, honestly, that's what nerd culture is. It's, we love you, but the fact that you think the Hulk can beat Wolverine means you're fucking stupid. Like, like, like that is nerd See, culture. I think that's the problem with nerd culture. That we're way too serious about this. It's such a subjective thing no, to talk but, about. Listen, you just had a bad conversation about the hyperdrive versus warp drive, okay? You're right. I had a bad conversation, but that bad conversation was with Zach. <laughs> Zack is a brick wall when it comes to Star Trek. You cannot talk about Star Trek being inferior to anything. In but Discovery is going to be inferior. It's going to be so. I don't know. Nick, oh, it's here's be the thing. Inferior. No, Nicholas Myers and CBS are already working on the next Star Trek project because Discovery is going to tank. Yeah, that's. I don't think it's going to tank. I don't. I think it'll appeal to at least some people. That yeah. Are Star Trek. Yeah. You like know what else people. appeals to people? Like there are people out there in the world that want to know how big your poop are. You're right. There are there are people who care about poop so, size. So, so it I, does, it, I pooped you know, green one time and sent it to my mom. I pooped purple one time. Thank you, Booberry cereal. Nice. Yes. Dude, Booberry is delicious. Loops will, fruit loops is it, make your poop green. Is it sad that like after Chris's conversation about being a fucking gentleman, like all I heard from that is like there's pizza in the fridge. Yeah. No. Well, it wasn't. It, <laughs> yeah. it wasn't like it, it was. It was. I, we were talking about heroes. I think I, I need to get me some of that pizza. Right? We were talking about heroes, and I was like, it, it wasn't even like a big deal. Like, it was just getting the door for your significant other. Were, were you we thinking, can be heroes! Uh, uh, were, you, were you thinking that we can be heroes like Chad Kroger's song? Like, yeah, hero can save us! And I did. I, I saved her by opening that car door. God, I'm amazing. That's ridiculous. Oh, my God. Chris, you're an amazing individual. Yes. With so, my door holding. I, I gotta mention something that I think is just really funny because I knew it was gonna happen. Did you guys see that there's a review up for Inhumans right now? No. No. Oh my god, the reviewer is so brutal. He's like, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. I mean, you gotta check out the review. The review is brutal. Why is it the worst thing he's ever seen? I, I, he, he just, he can't talk about specifics because of the embargo on well, Okay, so is he, like, like, did you get the feeling, did you get the feeling that he's one of those guys that just doesn't understand Inhumans? No, 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 I get the feeling he understands Inhumans quite well. Okay, then he can be enraged. <laughs> and he was... Oh my because god. Because there's nothing worse than like like bad. like someone who's not who doesn't know the source of material like that is so horrible. Well, that yeah. is the worst thing. Listen, if you didn't read the book, if you don't know the comics, if you don't know anything other than the fact that this is a fucking movie, go fuck yourself. No. Like 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 these people, I haven't seen the Dark Tower yet, but these people are bitching about the Dark Tower. And I'm uh, I, I'm ho- I'm holding I judgment until I see good. it. It could still be good. We haven't seen it yet. All these reviews, everyone's like, I've never read the book, but I can tell you this movie's not good. Well fuck off then. What do you know? How would you even? Why is it even relevant to you if you haven't read the book? Why? Like right. you can say, <laughs> you can say this movie is not entertaining to people who haven't read the book. But if you're a fan of something, and I have, and I haven't seen the Dark Tower movie, but if I'm a, I'm a fan of the books. Me too. Like I read those books when I was 12 years old, and like I was so excited to read the finale, even after books five and six, I was in it to win it. Okay, don't don't <laughs> rain on my good. parade. Do not rain on my parade. I will rain on it myself. Because I'm going to talk... <laughs> next week, I'm going to talk about the Dark Tower if I can see it why, and how why, disappointing it is. What do you aim with? What do I aim with? Yeah. Uh, I I do not aim with my gun. That is for sure. I aim with my mind and my heart. Are you going to go see the Dark Tower this you week? You kill with I your heart. I plan on it. Roger, I plan on, you kill with your I'll heart. I'll probably go see it Thursday. Because I thought you were a guy who didn't go to movies. How come every time I invite you to go to a movie, you're like, Because you always invite me to like, like... Here's the thing. You invite me to like the big... Here's the big grand opening. I hate people. I hate people in movie theaters. Do you? Okay. I would love if I can walk in a movie theater and there's like three other people. 
I am golden. Because they're not going to be the popcorn munching, soda drinking, noise making sons of bitches. They're going to sit there quietly, enjoy the movie, laugh appropriately, scream appropriately, and make me enjoy my experience. Wow, do you realize how much of an old man you sound yes, like Yes, right but now? here's the thing. <laughs> I, have, I have always been that when I've it comes to theaters. I've paid my dues. If, no, no, no. I was, like, like when, I come, when I go to a movie theater and I see that one guy walking with like a huge thing of popcorn and the soda, I'm like, you can't finish that before the previews end. Like, if you come up with a hot dog and, like, a small drink, you're going to knock that shit out preview one and a half, right? When the movie starts, I don't want to hear ice slurping and popcorn bag ruffling. I paid my money, and I have always been this way. Ever since I was a, a teenager when I started movies, I've you can, always been you that You can way. have been a teenager, but it still makes you sound like an old folky. And, and, it makes you sound like a dick. <laughs> no, I, I, like, I, here's the thing. I, get that I don't want to interact with people socially. Fuck that. No, no. I would love. <laughs> like, you can hit me up outside the movie theater after the movie ends, and I will talk to you about that movie until we're blue in the face. I love that shit. Here's what I don't love. I'm trying to watch the movie, and I hear... <laughs> That shit annoys me. I'm trying to watch a movie. I feel like you're severely exaggerating the level of ambient no, noise no, in a movie yes. theater. Yeah, I am. Like, but I focus on that. I'm like, 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 <laughs> like, like, I focus on that shit. I'm like, you motherfucker, you've got to be kidding me right now. Did you seriously bring a bag of beef jerky into this motherfucker? What is your problem? Well, hold on, time out. Beef jerky is delicious. It is delicious. I think if you're going to bring anything into the movie theater, it should be beef jerky. No, you don't just bring, you don't <laughs> just bring why in the movie I theaters. Haven't. Here's what you bring in the movie theaters. Unwrapped Twinkies. If, you, if they're already unwrapped, they're going to make no noise while you eat them, and we're Where good. are you going to be storing you unwrapped That is not my problem. Are you going to put them in your Actually, pocket? hold like, on. What the time fuck? out. No, 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 no. So there's such a thing as a movie theater bag, and if you have a woman in your life, she has this bag, and it's basically a fucking duffel bag. So you're going to have her put an unwrapped Twinkies in her purse? Yeah, like, yeah. You, you put them in a Ziploc bag. No, no, Ziploc ma- makes... He's make, talking make. about not having a bag at all because it makes too much noise. Roger, you sound stupid. No, I'm serious. Like, here's the thing. I, put them in a fucking Ziploc bag. I, it doesn't make that I, much noise. I, this you is open why... it during the previews, you slide them out as it plays. During the previews is cool. During the previews, make as much fucking noise as you want. <laughs> I don't care if you're on your phone. I don't care if you're jerking in the theater seat. Do what you got to do in the previews. Once those credits roll, finish your drink, have your food eaten, and let's enjoy this movie. You do not finish your drink before. No. No, then you're going to have to piss eight times. I don't care. Don't get up. up. You Hold it like a man. All I'm saying. No, that's that's, this actually, is why that's I a correct statement. This is why I cannot go... Like, like, like when you invite me to movies, it's always for like midnight showings. And as much as I love being with fellow nerds seeing these movies... The, the, the level of annoyance is there because if like half the crowd laughs at a moment that that's not funny like I was like you, no don't laugh I am that much of a judgmental prick it's it, if, if something subjective He's, now you're is not implying that him. comedy doesn't apply the same or differently to other people no, like what are you talking problem. about here's the problem Jason I'm not applying that I am saying that is fine this is why I don't go to the movie theaters because I am that irritated right. like it takes me out of the movie and I'm like this I'm like you motherfuckers Shut the fuck up. I don't understand Shut why you're f- so angry. It doesn't time. do the anger. I'm you're not so angry. hostile. Like, like, me and my brother, we, 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 I have seen every James Bond movie in theater with my brother since since um, the movie Listen, after GoldenEye. Not every. Since, since the movie after GoldenEye. We have seen every James Bond movie in theater. So and, Die Another Day? No, uh, was it Die Another Day? Or was it t- Tomorrow, Tomorrow Never, Never Dies? Dies? So from Tomorrow Never Dies up, we have seen every James Bond movie in theaters. We make sure we go to these movie theaters at 10 in the morning. Do you know why? Because it's all old ladies who are all like, I just love James Bond. And sure. they sit there. And then after the movies, we're talking, we're doing our so, thing. So then how come, you know, like, you don't respond to my text message with, hey, I don't want to go see it at midnight, but let's go <laughs> see it tomorrow at 11. Because I'm done I'm for that. In. I'm done for that. But, like, in my mind, you've seen it in the midnight. You're getting out of the theater at 3 in the morning. Do you know I saw up. Spider-Man Homecoming the first four nights it was open? That's awesome. You're a fucking freak. Oh my god! Great. Seeing a movie four times in a row. Great, Jason. Jason to I be think fair, you're a good person. For that. I love you, Jason. Great. To be fair, though, like I saw Cloverfield twice in one day. Yeah, <laughs> like, it happens. I went to the damn Iron Man freaking uh, you know marathon that they did before Avengers. Yeah, that makes you awesome. I cannot, <laughs> I would be so irritated by the time the Avengers came out because all the all the things that every little thing that those persons have done in the theaters. When I see someone walking with a kid. Like a kid, I'm like, why is a kid in this movie? This movie is rated R. Why is there a... It can be a 12-year-old kid. It can be a 12-year-old kid. I'm like, why is this kid here? He's going to say something. He's going to talk. The best was when I went to see Watchmen, and there was a mom in there. Oh, my children. God. That, yes. And within the first 10 minutes, she had gotten up and walked out with her children <laughs> to get back in the car and go home. Here's the thing. Like, like I went and saw Paranormal Activity in a very packed theater, right? But everyone in that theater, like, it was like an alignment of the stars. 
Everyone was quiet. Everyone jumped at the appropriate time. My brother, I felt bad for everybody because here's me and my brother doing paranormal activity. We are just very still. Like all the jump scares, everything. Like there's no jumping. There's no none of that. And in our heads, it's that was scary. That was creepy. That this was awesome. I'm trying to be a big tough guy. Over here. Uh, my he brother, I'm going to call my brother right we now. We felt nothing. No, at the end of the movie, me and my brother cool get up. guys don't get scared. Me and my brother get up, get up, walk out of the movie. I'm like, that movie fucked with us. That movie was scary. It did awesome things, except for the ending. And then we bitched about the ending. But that, that's my problem. I can't. I don't like people because they take me out of the movie. I'm paying my money, and now so with, are all of them. And, and, and you're right. You're but, not the only one paying money. But now yes, with, it is. No, he's not. <laughs> but now, it. now with big screen TVs, home theater systems being the are the way they are, I can wait, watch the movie in the comfort of my own home. In the quietness that I want. And then he can cry. And then, guess what else he can do? What? Uh-huh. Oh, well, he can fish for some terrorists. I can fish for terrorists? You can fish for terrorists. Do you know how you can do that? I can go to slugfestgames.com slash ETG. That's what you can do, all right. And while you're there, you can check out games like Red Dragon Inn, High Noon Saloon. Battle for Greyport. That's right. Guys, go to slugfestgames.com slash ETG for a little more info. Check out the swag there. So much swag. Everything from shirts to signs, the uh, flasks, Flask. a little bit of everything. Um, pick up whatever you're missing from Red Dragon Inn. If there is a, an, an expansion that you do not have, Our get kid. it. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times it's hard to get these expansions. They can, you can get slugfestgames.com slash ETG. Or if there's an individual character that you want. Uh, Slugfestgames.com slash ETG. Yep, get Pookie. Get all Pookie. Pookie is my stuff. Um, so yeah, like Roger said. Slugfest games, Slugfestgames.com slash ETG. That's the one. <laughs> That's it right there, guys. That's it right there, guys. Do you know what else you need to do? Hey, do you know where to go if you have a hole in your comic collection? Well, you go to Cloud9Comics.com. Cloud9Comics and more. It is Cloud9Comics and more, and it's not .com, but it's an eBay page. It's an eBay page. Do you know what else you get from there? You get... Great graded comics. You get more. Jason, what do you get from Cloud9 Comics and more? You work there. <laughs> Dude, I work there. Oh, you're putting all my business out there? You can get all kinds of stuff. Like a Buddy Jesus stuffed out or stuffed animal? A little, a little stuffed Buddy Christ I got. I got These... some awesome 9-8 CGC graded comics. It's great. They sell movies too. It, they, it's more. It's more. Like It's, it's, a, more. it's an amazing little set. There's um, toys. There's cards. Everything you can think hey, of. If you guys are looking for something in particular, or you're looking to unload your collection, why don't you give uh, Paul Gabney a call? Yeah, in. you can reach him at three one four nine six. Or I'm sorry, six nine one two eight six four. Again, three one four six nine one two eight six four. Let me make sure I got that right. Three one four six nine one two eight six four. And that's Paul. Paul what? Gabney at Cloud Nine Gabani. Comics and More. Gabani at Cloud Nine Comics and More. That's the one. Guys, check him out. Now. That we're past all of the advertisements and all that fun stuff. Guys, thank you for tuning in and stay geeky. I promise I'll get young one day. <laughs> <laughs>